Hello and welcome to this examination of Bornum Trapel or triple, this Abbey triple. Um, don't know when it was introduced. It's 9% alcohol. They said the company has been around since uh, 1789. The company is Van Steen Deriga of, of, of um, Ertveld, Belgium. Imported by Win It Two of Middleton, Massachusetts, and is part of the Global Beer Network. And you can look it up on globalbeer.com, Win It Two, or Van Steenberger's websites. Okay, little squat bottle, I guess I call it. Typical um, Belgian style bottle. You see these a lot if you're familiar with Belgian beers. Uh, it's got a a stork with a looks like a little worm in its mouth or a, maybe a fish or a snake in a creek. Um, they're saying here, it's a lively Abbey beer of 9% content alcohol after its first fermentation in the bottle and it evolves during its second fermentation or in the barrel. Abbey triples are mostly blonde or light amber in color. The Borum triple tastes hoppy and full with an excellent sweet bitter balance. Sweet bitter balance. It's pleasant scent and nice foam head make this beer a winner in its kind. Okay, enjoys dessert or appetizer. Some prefer it with mussels or other seafood. This Abbey beer also suits excellent, also suits excellent <laughs> with a hearty cheese platter. Well, they're doing the best they can to translate into English. English. Uh, Reviewing under influence may join me. We had set it up for tonight. I know he's been having computer problems, so he may not. He did come on late last time. If you remember the the double, he had trouble cl clocking in. So Jordan, with the reviewing under influence of Alberta, Canada, if you can't join me, you do your own review. I know he'll do his own video review. Nice hiss. I uh, had a problem with one blowing up on me, the Pirat. Triple hop. Had to clean up a huge mess. Luckily, this one is not that lively. Let's see that. Oh, got messed up with another accident earlier. Okay, um, earlier in the month. Probably optimum. Optimally, I should be doing these beer videos in the kitchen so I can go straight to the sink. Shouldn't be doing them in an office with carpet, but at least it's tight nap carpet. Oh boy, here we are after 6.30. That is a thick, spongy head. It's almost like uh, you get these marshmallow head, you see? Lots of fierce bubbles, and it is golden. Look at that. You might see the light hitting it properly. Mm. I think I need to take a photo. Okay. So I've had this twice before. Beer Advocate and Rape Beer, they're not in love with it. Beer advocate saying it's good. The bros say it's okay. Okay. When I had it before, I scored it most excellent, so I thought it was much better than just okay. All righty. Post that later. Yeah. We hope that Jordan can join us. All right. So shout out to Be Reviewing Under Influence, and welcome to everyone. Okay. The head is dying down a little bit. Now, I, I did remark that I prefer doubles over triples, and I prefer quadruples over all of them. 
Oh, it's so yeasty and spicy. It's like he was saying last night, uh, night four, it's a white pepper. A white pepper. Jamaica pepper. Faint banana note, actually, coming from the yeast. Um, coriander, I wouldn't say that. Now, this beer is probably made with water, barley malt, hops, a yeast, and perhaps candy sugar. Belgium is not under the Reinheitsgebot, the German purity law, so they will oftentimes add adjuncts. Corn, flaked maize, we call them corn flakes, is added to the left beers, and in Belgium, that's not considered unusual at all. And candy sugar is a common additive. Okay. I notice on this bottle, they're now saying 1789 for some reason. Hmm. And I got this as part of that six pack, six different beers for $17.99 plus tax, which is a very good deal for a beer of this quality, I believe. It has brandy notes. I've had some brandies like the ENJ VO brandy, Ernest and Julio Gallo winery brandy. They do some distilling there. Uh, and it has some of those commonalities. Some, <laughs> not so many. It's got fruitiness like golden raisin, the white pepper, the alligator pepper. That's a strong component of it. So I think a lot of people may have been turned off by it because it's just too peppery. You'd almost think they added white pepper, but you know they did not. Banana, little bit, little bit. Sugar, sweetness, white bread. And when I say that, when I was talking about the brandy, it's because of the pretty noticeable alcohol thrust the global beer network was established by johnny francioni and his wife in 1994 1994 and they only according to what they were saying on their website they only import living beers which means beers with live yeast in the bottle that'll ferment in the bottle oh yeah there's sediment down there so we're going to see how this clouds up in a moment oh yes I can see it just kind of like leaching to the side. Uh, I think there's maybe some skin, like prune skins or something in the flavor. Okay. Came loose very easily. So let's see. this fading light oh <laughs> did it cloud up did it cloud up wish you could hear this little crackle just a soft crackle 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 <clears throat> boy there's a descending yellow gray cloud and ascending bubbles so they're clashing the descending gray cloud and the ascending bubbles On the sweetness scale, Cyclops scale, and this could be part of the Cyclops scale. They have their own website. You can just look it up, and they'll have hundreds of beers that are graded according to that simplified Cyclops scale. So they just basically say, how sweet is the beer? Three, uh, How many sugar cubes out of five sweetness? This is probably four out of five sugar cubes. Sometimes I'll make a guess, and then I'll check the scale, and I'll be right or close to it. Bitterness is pretty darn bitter, so the hop note is is very prominent. It's almost in some ways like the Belgian IPAs, which are so different than American IPAs. So if you get one of these IPAs from Belgium, like um, I believe there's the um, 
oh, what's the name of that? Not the Slapmutsky, but um, Earthel. Earthel. It's so different. It's a, basically a different style. I mean, to try to compare, it's bad enough trying to compare American IPAs and British IPAs. They're two different styles, really. And then the Belgian is like another universe. Um, but it has those characteristics. So if you're not into bitter beers, this will not suit you. Remember the old Keystone Light commercials from 20 years ago, bitter beer face. You know, the guy would drink a beer. I think his whole face would have smashed up to this wide with this beer. Talk about a bitter beer face. And a Keystone Light drinker would probably be repelled by this. Um, but I'm not. But on the other hand, I'm used to it. The carbonation is prickly. The mouthfeel is heavy, low heavy, but it's heavy. This is not a light beer by any means. It's not a low calorie beer. So if you're not looking to get f like the thing people tell me, I like light beers because they're not filling and they don't make me feel bloated. Well, this is filling and you're going to feel bloated. So you may not want to mess with it if you're a, a light beer drinker. It would be so appalling. Now it is starting to develop these grain husk characteristics, which you will get this is my claim. People scoff. Some people say you're crazy. You're mad. I do pick those up in things like Schlitz VSL, the 8.5% uh, Schlitz, which is close in alcohol to this. And that's going to be clear. It's highly filtered and it's pasteurized, not living yeast. <coughs> you see what I mean about the carbonation? <coughs> it builds up and then a release with a lot of force, this carbonation. Um, but the Schlitz VSL and the um, Colt 45 high gravity, which is also 8.5, that's really strong. I mean, those come in big pint cans. And I believe the VSL and probably the, the, the Colt 45 high gravity come in these 24 ounce cans. It's very dangerous. You're talking about 8.5% alcohol and they're pretty smooth and they're much lighter bodied. That's where the danger is. You drink Schlitz VSL, it's pretty smooth. It's going to have that grain husk back note like this. <clears throat> and that's the commonality. Of course, they're using corn syrup, the brewer's syrup, not the K-Row like you get at the grocery store, but a special brewer's syrup as their adjunct, I'm sure. And they're using hot pellets and all that. All right. Whatever. But it's really pretty high quality, quality like if you drink the Schlitz VSL or the, uh, that's the Gold Bull or the... Um, Cold 45 high gravity. They're so light bodied that the alcohol, you're going to take two or three sips and you're going to feel the alcohol here. And maybe alcoholics and, uh, you know, major, you know, people with major person, you know, um, life problems are going to be suspect to buy that stuff because it'll be like a dollar 59 for a, or dollar 79 for a 24 ounce can. And, They'll guzzle that stuff and be laid out on the street under the bridge downtown. You know what I mean? So, uh, and that's not to disparage those beers because they're not, they're not explicitly created for that, that population. You know, the company is going to say it's created for the discerning beer drinker, but I wonder what percentage of the discerning beer drinkers drink it. But anyway, that's politics and all of that beer politics. So back to this. Now, this is not going to be drunk by your problem drinkers because it's $3 a little bottle. And it doesn't deliver the alcohol in the same way, like a lager. The alcohol delivery here grows slowly, so... You might get to the very end of the bottle before you feel any effects. And if you're only drinking one bottle and you had a reasonable supper, I had some salad, you know, it's not going to affect you at all, really. I mean, and if it does affect you, it'd be very minimal. Like I might slur a few words at the end, you know, like have trouble with S's, but 
I mean, that's it. That's the last beer of the day, the number four out of four. And then I'll have hot tea, you know, so this is not what your problem drinkers are going to be looking for. They're looking for that lightning rod lager that's going to deliver the alcohol into the bloodstream and psh, right to the brain. Um, and I would dare say you get a beer like, um, here's a good example, Keystone Ice. I was in Beaumont, Texas in 1919. Yeah, right. 2014. And I bought a 24 ounce can for my collection. And I went to my friend's house in Texas and his wife is kind of a, she's a beer drinking enthusiast. I mean, you know, she's not a discerning drinker like, oh, let me try all these different styles, whatever. I mean, she just likes like drinking, drinking. Okay, but beer, like, you know what I mean? So um, she said, let's split this Keystone Ice. I never heard of it, you know, she knows nothing about it and she's not gonna go research it and she doesn't really care that much. She's like the average American, you know, it's not a hobby, it's something to drink. Oh, she says, fabulous, I think it's really good. You know, this is really good, you know, who makes it? I said, Coors, oh yeah, I know, you know, they know what they're doing, you know. Well, so she, she's drinking half the, we're pouring in glasses, we're not drinking out the can. So she drinks half of it, I drink half of it, and we are just like, a, you know, it's like the plane took off the the uh, the launcher pad. So, I mean, you could feel it. And that's what I'm, the point I'm getting at, it delivers it. it I, I don't know the science, but I think the lagers deliver the alcohol in a much more direct fashion. So I was like, oh man, this is something else. But this beer isn't going to do that, but it's it's still got a, like an insidious little alcohol build. So one beer here, one Bornum Trapel at 9%, it's fine, you know, you drink it. Like I said, the effects would be minimal. But if you drink two, that's 22.4 ounces, I mean, watch out. I would not do it. I mean, I wouldn't do it. I've made those mistakes. I drank the Coney Island human blockhead 22 ounce bottle once. And that is 11.7 11 point, 11 or something. They don't make it anymore. Uh, Boston Brewing Company bought it out. Boston Beer Company bought Coney Island. And they, uh, uh, you can't come in here, bird. Uh, and they uh, cut out a lot of their more exquisite products. Like the human blockhead barrel age. I mean, why would they get rid of that? There's a dynamite double bock barrel age, but it was, it would lay you out. And I drank the whole 24 ounce bottle. It was a very bad mistake. But this here, what I'm saying, okay, to wrap it up, this is not so dangerous in that in that respect, because you're only looking at 11.2 ounces, 330 milliliters, so leave it at that, drink it, leave it at that, go get the hot tea. I'm gonna turn the bet, the baseball game on Rangers are playing. That's the main feed we get, the Rangers. So uh, yeah, I mean, you know, this is sort of a safe item. So thank you for watching, it tastes really good. I mean, I don't understand these scores where Beer Advocate is saying it's okay. If you watch the video with Bornham Dubell, Double, I even took exception to Jordan because he was saying it was very good. Now, I mean, he said it was very good at the minimum, so he's being pretty fair with it. He's not saying it's okay. I mean, that's a C. A C is okay. I drank Keystone Premium. I bought a 30-pack in Texas, and I said it was okay. I mean, you know, it was, it was a C. It wasn't bad. But it was okay. This is much higher than okay, in my opinion. To me, this is like a an A, most excellent, and I, I'm not doing a formal review, although you might say, well, examinations are, are a review. Mm, you could kind of say that in a way, but I mean, yeah, it's it's great. If you if you find that six pack for seventeen ninety nine, and you've never had the Van Steenberger beers, you just got to do it. I think you've got to do it. Um, <laughs> You want to be a ticker? These are six beers to tick off your to drink list, I would say. So thank you for watching this examination. I'm sorry Jordan couldn't uh, join me or whatever. There was a mix up, but um, if he does, 
and I know he's going to, he loves making the video reviews, reviewing under influence. Remember that folks, you, you subscribe to that channel, reviewing under influence. I'll watch his video if he makes it and I know he will. So thank you and have a good and great night.